Okay, so you guys put, go ahead and put some weight on, on the sides there. And so, in general, what we want to do in this case is we know the balloon's not quite light enough to fly, right? Right. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to keep weight on for now. We're going to heat up the balloon. And then we're going to ask for weight off, but hands on. Okay. And then that should kind of get us off the ground. And then when we feel confident, we'll just say hands off. Okay. Okay. Okay to do longer burns. Uh -huh. so a little bit. Okay. Now, in theory, you've got their weight on here too. So, so once you feel like again. it's pretty close, you'll, I think you're about one good long burn away. So okay. Try this. Okay. So now let's do weight off and hands on. Okay. And we should be really close now. A good long burn. Thanks, guys. Bye. Love you. Have a safe flight. Okay, we're in here. It's pretty nice, isn't it? I get so nervous leading up to this point. Right. And then I get in here and I feel a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm feeling a nice track down here over the Amazon building. Okay. And so I think that we just... You know, I think it kind of doesn't matter. Now, at this point right here, you got to burn. There's just a little bit of false lift. Even okay. though it's not super windy, you always get just that little bit. And so, you know, we were kind of leveling out, and now you've bumped it back up a little bit. Yeah. When I was driving down Powers this morning, I saw this bank of fog or haze or whatever it's like oh hey that's concerning i called the airport and they said clear so yeah but yeah it just feels like we've had a lot of that extra smog and haze here lately okay we think we're here so the way we call the airport is we announce who we're calling so Colorado we're gonna call Springs tower right and we are hot air balloon november 74008 right and then in this case, since they, they know who we are, uh, that's really plenty and just say, you know, we just took off one more. Do, uh, do you say that initially? Yeah. Springs Tower, Hot Air 74008 just took off to your west. Hot Air 74008, Springs Tower, Roger. Yep. Hi, welcome to 3005. 3005, copy, thank you. So it's squirrelier up high today. That's the anticipation, at least what the ruck says. Now the pie ball sort of went up and sort of went north, and Terry actually said it, he thought it was starting to go back west as it went up, which I find surprising that was not in the forecast. Um, but just because it's not in the forecast doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? What? <laughs> I thought the forecast were 100%. <laughs> Hi, Hot Air 70 Okay, a couple of visual cues here is you see the water tower uh -huh. and the steam, and then you see the Amazon building, and then you see the other water tower uh -huh. out there. My experience is if you can stay left of this water tower, uh -huh. then your life is pretty good. Okay. 
Okay. If you feel like you're going east of that water tower, I'm sorry, west of that water tower, things get pretty tight down there. Which we're kind of... Yeah, we're, we're, we're left of it, so it's just fine. In an ideal world, what you would do is you'd be headed right towards that other water tower right down there. Okay. Because that takes you over Amazon, over the open space, over the neighborhood. <laughs> into the lake area. Um, and so in general, what I find from here is uh, more left, everything gets easier. Okay. And it's never too early to start planning your land. Okay. But I, I'm happy with what we've got here. As we're flying, we're getting a gradual left turn. Um, I think things are really excellent. So I need to be climbing, correct? I don't know, why would you climb? Because I'm over congested areas. Yeah, ideally you'd be a thousand feet above these folks. And, you know, will we ever get to a thousand feet? I don't know. Um, but even from a perception standpoint, if you're just cruising level over folks like this, they get the sense that you're not even trying. Right. Whereas if you're gradually climbing... The nays. Yeah. Now that said, especially with this type of an area where, in, in my opinion, there's not a lot of sensitivity here, um, my flight planning comes before managing congested area. Okay. So like if we go up and we get a right turn, I, I don't care. I'm going down low because I want a nice safe landing and I don't want to have to be in the neighborhoods later. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Safety first. Yeah. And I, I believe it is still illegal, but at least it's a reasonable... So if you had got question, that could be a pretty good right. answer why hey, I did this. I tried to go to a thousand feet. I got this turn. That's a really congested area. So I stayed low to get out of congestion to give us a safer, safer landing and to be over fewer people. And I think that, that's nice and slow. Yeah, it is. Where are we going for? The ideal path out of that launch site is about 145 ish. So we've got 170. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things. It'd be nice to have a left turn, but it's not a big deal. Temperature inversion or something? Because it sure went down quick. It could be. Is this the altitude that that pie ball turned around? It was a little higher than this, I thought. Okay. Now our envelope temperature is only 151 degrees, so we got a lot of headroom. Yeah. Um, Tending to climb, right? Yeah. I feel like we're changing, going kind of that way more now. Do you? Yeah, we're getting, I mean, it's 172, 173, so we're getting a little bit of that right turn. Also, you can look at the steam coming off the power plant and see how it caps out at what looks like to be two to 300 feet. That tells us that there is an inversion layer at least laying over the city okay. that may or may not be here. Now, we convincingly saw the pie ball go back north, right? Right. Both times. Right. So, therefore, I'd recommend that you keep climbing two okay. to three hundred feet a minute. And let's see when we pick up that turn. Okay. Now, because this direction, 200, this gets us into this area down here, which it's not horrible. You sort of get down Highway 85, there's a lot of power lines, congestion, eventually Fort Carson. So in terms of the length of flight, that wouldn't be as nice. Right. Whereas if we can keep climbing, if, if we do get that turn back to the north, that'd be ideal. And our guess is that's going to be somewhere around 68-ish. 68, yeah. Okay.
rest now, right? Okay. Just keep climbing and find that mm -hmm. north. Yep. This is such an awesome sport. It is. I should have stayed lower and rode it out a little farther and then jumped up and come back to the north, huh? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, to some degree, we never really know because we don't know what wind we're going to find. The pie ball's a good indicator. And while the wind on the very surface, the first couple 300 feet, is likely to change with the sunrise, the stuff up at 500 to 1,000 isn't. Okay. Um, and so it's really reasonable to believe that the pie ball that we saw is still there because it's only been what 30 or 40 minutes yeah. that should be fine so out here we tend to get pretty uh, I'll say spoiled and com and maybe complacent around landing sites um, when we look out to our east, I mean, those acres, th those fields that we're landing in typically are hundreds of acres of nothing, right? right? Which is great, you can do a nice <laughs> and, uh, and if you do a really slow approach and you miss it, it's no big deal, you got three more tries, it's, it's fine. And what I find is if we always fly way out there in sort of the middle of nowhere, then we don't get a very fine-tuned awareness of what is a good landing spot. Okay. I can see that. Because it's easy to look out there and say, oh man, that's where I want to be landing. This is all way too tight. I got nothing. I should panic. Not necessarily. Um, because what you can do is you can start to fine-tune it and think, well, the balloon is on the order of 100 feet tall, call it 50 to 75 feet wide. And any of these would be right. There's a school, here's a field, here's another school. Any of those would be totally fine, right? And from a safety standpoint, uh, we could we know we can land in a street, in a parking lot, in this storage area construction. And all of those types of things are fine. The biggest advantage, which I love about Colorado Springs, is most of the town has underground power lines. Right. So we don't have to worry about, does that building a power line? Some of them do, but you've got to pay attention. But by and large, there aren't a lot of power lines. We're Temperature inversion? Maybe? Yeah, I feel like we're just sort of right on that boundary, because we've made that turn, you can see. Yeah. keep climbing? I think so. I mean... This is a pretty good direction. I don't know. We can just... I, we can camp out here if you want. That, that sort of takes us over there. We're not going quite over the airport yet. And as we climbed, you notice that we, j we gradually made this sweeping turn. So if we wanted to, we could go further at, further west. Uh, I'm could not we, sure we'll get more east. Right. You know. We didn't see that in the five ball, but... Black is turning vent? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to give it a shot? Yeah. So should I give it a little heat before I do? Yeah, it will let a little heat out. about trying to shoot for the launch site. Okay, so I would need to... Where did we 
see a west. So I just need to come down and find the west, huh? Yep, and probably not even a lot, because you still got to go north. But I bet if you drop down 300 feet, I bet you would find that sort of 320, 330 type range. So to come down with the maneuvering vent? You can, or you can just let it cool. Okay. Either way works. We're not trying to make a real precise move. Just and so just, just let, yeah, let it cool a little bit. Let yourself get into a two, 300 foot descent, maybe a little less, and that'd be fine. It is nice. As we got up to that 68, we had 020, almost a 030. It's nice to know that's there because that's a great direction. Right on the boundary of finding that left turn. I could just barely feel the wind on the back of my neck. So you've been flying off this tank, right? Yep. And uh, it just came off the peg. We're down to about 30%. Okay. So again, I think the strategy of flying all the way empty, and then we'll switch. It's a slow little short burst to keep yeah, the balloon warm. Yep. Because notice how you're maintaining a very consistent descent rate by doing that. And that way, if I need to come up, it's not going to take as much to go. And you're just not letting it get ahead of you. You have to feel that wind on your face. Yeah. Okay, so we should start feeling a turn here pretty quick. I think so. Nothing in a hurry. No. No, as you as you get to the point where you're making more and more precise moves. The timing matters, but rarely are you in a hurry to do things. Where that can change, or at least the feeling of it can change, is when you're doing the landing, because then you feel like you're doing a burn and a turn and a vent and talking to passengers, and all of that timing happens. Fast. And that's why Scott was saying, Sometimes it's easy to get distracted with other things when you really ought to just be flying the balloon. Concerned about the holes in the building, but you've already burned enough that we're leveling out, right. and so okay. that's a weird feeling too. I'm gonna have to overcome that sense of oh, we're really yeah. close. Yep, really typical. Yeah, burn too much. 
interesting that even on the way down, notice that we got east, not west. Right. So that tells me that middle layer is very not small. very trustworthy. Yeah. Sunrise, Kilo Chaser, he's loud and clear. Oh, you look sexy up there, man. <laughs> Think through what your flight plan is and notice that we got that track, right. you popped up, you got a little bit of a bump east, right? Because we were over the hotel there. Right. And so we gained a quarter of a mile maybe. And now we're headed back on that track. Um, and so I think, you, I think you'll actually benefit from staying low and headed south. Okay. Just barely descending, but we're that burn should level us up. That's a feeling I'm trying to get used to, also. Yep. by yourself? I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just sort of as a life principle, I'm pretty good at being alone, right. so it's comfortable. feel kind of boring if there's no one to talk to or something like that. Good time to turn me in the right direction, huh? Yeah, if you feel like you want to turn, like right now, this is going to turn us this way, right? Oh uh, yeah, so, so I'd have to go all the way. You'd around. have to go all the way around, which right. is not the end of the world. Um, How much is too much to pull on that thing? It's pretty hard to over pull it. You feel the tension in it. So that's where the timing right. sort of gets tricky. I'm sure it'll take some practices to get used to that. Yep.
of this if we had to. We'll try. Right. Yeah, isn't it interesting how now we've got a real strong east? east yeah. That's sort of the nature of it being calm here, though, is it tends to be light and variable. Which is great for landings, uh, but it's hard to plan a flight. Are we still turning from the turn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that went on for it, quite a while. It's real slow, but yeah, it does just keeps that momentum to it, doesn't it? Or another one would be perfect. Right, Stop just it. a little bit. Sort of put the brakes on that turn. Well, when you're nibbling, you can do that. Right. Yeah. Little tiny vents. There's always an excuse to want new stuff, right? right. Okay, so I think this this sort of flying straight and level is good. I think these light standards are our biggest obstacle. Got to keep an eye on, right? Let's talk about emergency procedures. Okay. There's a couple of emergencies that could potentially happen in the air that are worth being prepared for. Um, you know, there's a whole litany of things that might possibly happen, but probably not. The three things that I like to be really prepared for are something like a fuel leak, a fire, or some sort of a passenger problem. Okay. Passenger problem could be medical, they're having a heart attack, they could be having a panic, or wh whatever that might be. And by and large, there's not a lot to do differently in terms of flying the balloon when the passenger does that. Um, but what I do find is if a pa passenger is panicking, or even if they're having a heart attack or whatever, one of the best approaches is just to have them sit down. Um, a couple of the benefits of that is that um, they're not going to do something d dumb and fall out. Um, and if they're sitting down, they're more likely to be able to just breathe, relax. They're not going to be able to see out. Oftentimes, help, whatever it can relieve their on. fear of heights or whatever. And if they really are having a heart attack or something like that, and they pass out, passing out from sitting is a whole lot safer than passing out from right. standing. More gravity. If they're sitting down, uh, in general, you don't have to mess with them while you're trying to land. Whereas if they're standing, who knows what they're doing, right? Because they're probably not listening, they're not paying attention, they're not holding on. So those are, I, and in fairness, they're they're pretty rare, but it's nice to know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gun. Rather have it, not need it. Sure. And so in that kind of a situation, let's say you've got someone who's panicking or having a heart attack and you say, this is serious enough that I'm going to land. Then typically what I do is I like to alert the crew because they're not really paying attention to where we are or what, you know, because they know we're not landing, right? right. And so um, it, you can make up any excuse. Uh, a lot of times crews develop sort of a code word language. Um, I've never done that just because I frequently have new crew and I, they, you know, who knows, they don't know the special terms. Um, but even something as simple as, um, you know, hey guys, I'm over the sports field. I'm going to go ahead and do a landing. Can you come help us out? It doesn't have to sound panicky. Right. Um, but especially with someone like Scott and Amanda on the other line, they know something's up, right? right. Something's weird. And it doesn't really matter what it is, right?
if you feel like it's a serious emergency, like a heart attack, then it is also fine and appropriate to ask them to call 911. Okay. Um, can, I, can you talk, do that from this also? You can declare an emergency. And with us so close to the airport, they would be in a position to help us. Like if we saw a traffic accident or something, would that mm -hmm. be something you could? I'd probably not, okay. probably wouldn't waste my time. But something along the lines of, let's say we're flying, and you know, this airplane's over here, we're, we're near airport property. To be able to call the airport and say, uh, I have an in-flight emergency and I'm gonna land, that would be fine. In general, they have emergency services that only operate on the airport. Right. So they wouldn't call 911 and get the police or an ambulance okay. here. But like if we're over the runway, absolutely land and they'll bring services out to you immediately. And that's a problem. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, and so then, if you did ask the crew to call 911, um, it's important in that minute and draw some boundaries on how wrong the situation is. Because if you just say, you know, oh God's God, call 911. Okay, what am I calling them about? Right, you need to have What's going some on? information to tell Are you about to Whereas you can say, uh, you know, hey, tequila chasers, uh, please call 911, I'm fine. Important to clarify that. Right. I'm fine and I have a medical emergency on board. That's plenty. Uh, and then so he can get on the wire and by the time you figure out how to get the balloon down, you'll probably have an ambulance there. Um, uh, I have never done that. Uh, I've been flying a long time. I've had people who have panic attacks. Yeah. Uh, I've had one. <laughs> passed out. Um, Just afraid of heights kind of thing? I, oh, she was super excited actually. It was really funny. She was super excited and I think just sort of high altitude. She kind of forgot to breathe and just got so excited she passed out. And I was flying one of the ride balloons. So I've got 10 passengers and all of a sudden I just I just feel like and I'm checking cables and like, is everything okay? And I'm like, and then I'm like, one, two, three, four. Okay, we're missing someone. Yeah, she's down here. <laughs> and she was, and so then, because she was passed out, I started my immediate descent looking for a landing and called the crew, um, and then she woke up. And uh, and I ended up landing anyway, and just sort of settled in and said, okay, now, how are you feeling? She explained, yeah, I'm super excited, that's fine. Um, so I just had her come close to me in the basket, and we took off again and had the rest of the night. So, but in all the years and all the passengers, I only had that one time, so. Uh, you know, I've always thought about it. Um, I worry more about the older passengers. Uh, and again, we talk a lot about heart attacks and things like that. Up here, we talk about altitude sickness, be a right. concern, hypoxia. Um, so that's just sort of pass. Now, the sort of in line of, of frequency, I think the potential for fire is probably the next emergency to pay attention to. Uh, I have never had a fire. I've never had a fire on board. I've never had a fire on the ground. I have seen a few. Um, just seen one the other day, sorry. Right, of. right. Uh, they become stories. Um, but like I say, I've, I've never had one. Um, the most, the, let me think about this. I have seen fire when refueling, and I've seen fire when inflating. Typically, they didn't check all their fittings, and so they got in, they went to inflate, and now they got fuel, and then they, you know, uh, they lit fire, that kind of a thing. Um, but again, never actually seen an onboard fire. Um, with the exception of, I suppose, technically, I've seen a couple of power line strikes that started. I think of that being different, of course. Um, and so, in general, with propane, if you have a propane fire on board, you there, there are a little bit of debate around the 
timing, but you have something on the order of 15 to 30 seconds to solve the problem. Get the type of fuel. That's right. Flow in or whatever. And so, in general, the approach I take, especially with this dual burner system that we have, that's all iced up. Yeah, it's just because the it's because you're not using it. Oh, okay. And because this fuel's just sitting there being cold. And is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm really trying to burn that one out yeah. so I can really hear it. Yep. I, I got turned around last time and I kept hitting this one when I was oh, trying. Oh, okay. I, trying I to watch the video one last night and notice that. So, in general onboard fire it's going to be at a couple of different places most likely it's going to be at a tank okay. most likely on the tank it's actually out of the stem of the tank valve and it might be at the fitting but the key is it will be here it's not going to be down here it's not going to be in a weird spot because this is the only vulnerable spot in the tank uh, now how would a spark I mean would it catch from here to here or would it just be like a spark it'd probably just be a spark especially on day you rub your jacket against it that kind of thing you're more likely to sense the fuel leak before a fire okay but if for some reason you do have a it's going to be here or it's going to be here at the blast valve um, and either way the approach is very similar and we deal with fuel leaks very similarly and that is if the fire is small enough to reach through because of course we're all wearing gloves right, right. then you just reach through and shut the fuel off and since we've got these tanks manifolded, you'd want to shut both tanks off so that you can limit fuel. Because even if those, this tank is off, it's still getting fuel from there. That valve or that fitting still has fuel. Um, and if I had to, I could just go straight from the burner to the tank. You could. Had to, you know, maybe if the issue was in the manifold exactly. or something. Exactly. Yep. So what we want to do is first step is sort of reach through the fuel leak or the fire and shut down the fuel. And then, ideally what you'd want to do is then you'd want to burn out the fuel okay. so that all your fire is going up into the balloon the way you intended it, and then you don't have any pressure on the lines. That's your most likely scenario of a fuel leak or a fire. And then of course the nice thing... Is that you know it's it's a little bit panic inducing, right? Right. But then once you've drained the fuel enough, it's probably no longer leaking. It's probably no longer on fire, and now you can move to the other side. And you know you should approach a, a landing. But the general principle is as soon as practical. Right. And so don't do something You're dumb. Safe. Just. Be safe about it, but get down okay. on the ground. Yeah, I'm going to work this landing, and you know what? This is going to be inconvenient because I'm going to be inside that fence. Fine. But, you know, that's that's it. That level flight will get away from you real fast. you got to stay tuned in, right? It's another thing, like, listening to you. You know, I have to, like, force myself to burn during the right. Talk. You got to do both things, and that's actually why that's one of the biggest reasons why I talk so much. Okay, just because to get me used to it. Yep, because your passengers will <laughs> non stop, right? I'm not moving anywhere fast. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think we have officially zero <laughs> movement right now. I think we've been over this school for uh, <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> I definitely see the shorter bursts keeping you from overburning and uh -huh. yeah so it's more frequent so the balloon doesn't cool as much and then you can let the balloon respond and get a feel for was that enough or no I'm gonna do another one it's easy how often do you look at your instruments when you fly it depends on what I'm flying if I'm if I'm flying a, a balloon I'm not familiar with, I'll check them especially for temperature. Yeah. Uh, two or three times in the flight just to make sure that it's what I predict. Um, 
And then where I really pay attention to the instruments is when I'm at altitude and you sort of lose that bearing on the horizon. But I still want to stay in a relatively thin layer and then I'll pay attention to it. Uh, other than that, I find that I don't look at them very often. I mean, with these, I look at the speed and direction quite a bit because I really want, oh, did I get that left turn and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, we haven't hit, I mean, our temps have been real low and we're yeah. still on the first tank. Yeah. I mean, we could easily fly for two or three hours possibly, Exactly. Huh? It's the nice thing about winter, I mean, and it's comfortable up here. Yeah. So, I mean, I was expecting it to be, I mean, my feet are a little cold. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing two pairs of socks. Yeah. You know, and my toes are fine. Um, So are you familiar with how to read the airport runway numbers and all that? Yep. You know, three, five, like there's a left and a right, mm -hmm. right? And then I can't remember what the other direction is. It'll be 180 degrees different, oh, so, it so it'll be 17. One seven. And it's like that at all airports. Mm -hmm. All runways are pretty much like that. Yep. Airport will will treat them as though they're totally separate runways, whereas we know they're just two ends of the same thing. Wind direction, stuff like that. But the three five runway in their mind is very different than the one seven runway. Um, and so that the fact that they're calling a, a three five tells you a variety of things. One is it tells you where they where they are physically so you can look if they're going to launch at three five left we know that they're going to be sitting right here um it also tells you that they're that's the direction they're going to go right 350 degrees um and if they're cleared for takeoff they're starting here and going away if they're clear to land they're out there somewhere coming in it's definitely worth paying attention to listening especially kind of in this area yeah, right we're kind of close and Give that a nice long burn. I hear it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe that sound, but it's, it's definitely different. It's softer, it's quieter, it's a Even squishy sound. The release. Like when I let go, it's different. Right. Well, that's almost out. I don't seem to be climbing as much either. No, because you're not getting the heat out. And so, burn again, look at your pressure. Out. I see. It's virtually zero. Yeah. And, and so now, and, and isn't it interesting how it doesn't feel like it goes gradually. Right. It's, it's fine, and, and then, then it's, it's empty. Not. Right. And so now at this point, I would just keep burning off of that until it's empty, or? It's empty. Okay, so I can shut it off? Yep. Go ahead and test the burner on the other side. You got patience to work the problem. Right. Yeah, now you can open that. There you go. And then 
Go ahead and test that burner. And now you know you got fuel on both sides again. And then, so now I'm switching. Okay. From here. Yep. And so that procedure was perfect. So what you did is you turned off the tank. And since we don't have to unhook anything, you don't have to drain the lines. Right. Turned off the tank, turned on the tank, tested the burner. The other thing that I like to do is once this is starting to get a little bit low, like maybe 20%, I'll go over and check the other burner a couple of times just to make sure. Okay. Um, you know, as you notice, this this glass valve is getting cold. Maybe it's okay, a good time to check did it Did it ice up? Did right. it leak? You know. So all this should go away after a little bit, a few burns. It will. Yeah. Whereas, like, the pressure gauge will stay frozen because the fuel is just sitting there. Okay. It's not moving at all. So the last thing to consider as we talk about our fuel leaks and fire is that you do have a fire extinguisher. Right. That was, I was when would be a time to use that? Like when wicker and stuff's on fire? Yeah. In general, it won't do you any good with the fuel. Right. You just gotta cut the source to stop the propane. You know. But if you've had a fire at a tank or a glass valve, you could have. Maybe you lit the wicker on fire, and so then you pull out your fire extinguisher and just sort of douse it to make sure everything's completely out. Um, in my opinion, frankly, fire extinguisher is good to have. I don't disagree with that. And uh, it's really for the guy next to you inflating. Because if they've got a fire on inflation, they're going to need help. They need help. So, so, like, for example, I have a fire extinguisher in my basket, of course, and I also have one attached to my fan. Okay. Um, That's a great idea. Because then, if I'm in the basket and my basket catches fire, Ideally, I'm going to have someone knowledgeable on the fan. Maybe, maybe not, right? But, but, but even a pilot next to me runs over. Do you need help? Well, I got a fire extinguisher right there on the fan. And so that's likely. Um, I, I think that's a good safety maneuver. So I do that. Um, but again, that's if for some reason you've had a persistent leak during inflation, and then you light the burner and you're engulfed in flames. The fire extinguisher is not what you're thinking about. Um, so, turning off your fuel is what's right. used to be what's... And that's why after our pre-flight, we always turn off all the fuel because we don't want it just sitting there leaking right. while we're Building not up. there paying attention. Yeah. It, could, it could be a bad deal. Okay, so how are we doing for obstacles here? Um, other than buildings? Yeah, we got buildings, trees, some uh, light poles occasionally. Over here around these fields. Okay. Southwest on the way down it sort of went this direction uh, so let's go ahead and just ease it down to what I would call treetop height and right. let's see where we end up like uh, just let the balloon do it naturally yep yep just nice and easy um, the biggest thing in this situation is not to let it get ahead of you right so do um, my little short puffs that's right as I'm What I'd like to do is, depending on what turn we get, I'd like to set us up to practice a limb. And so what we look for there is, in an ideal world, we would have no obstacles and we would just gradually ease down on this really shallow approach and then pick a place and stop. Uh, obviously, we have obstacles around here, but based on... 
our direction now and our the direction of our spit i'm sort of looking and i'm like okay well i got this field that field the next field. i got this field in front of the hotel behind the hotel uh, this is a little close but not bad because we're moving slow right. on the other side of the building is open that that's open other side of that building's open if we had to cross the street that's open both sides of the trees that's open on the other side there. So we got a lot of options. Right. Um, and I like that. I like planning the flight early enough that now when we're sort of thinking landing, we got a lot of options. So notice that one was a little bit of an overburden. It was, yeah. It's that feeling coming down to the ground, right. Cindy, or you need to <laughs> level out. and rotate us just a tad. Okay. And remember that what it will be time to burn. Because it was all already cooling down. Yep. Right and now okay so go ahead and let that go. So now you're gonna be able to stay in your good corner. But you got good visibility. Okay. And so again looking out the obstacles I see are all pretty low. Buildings, trucks, fences, tractors. The We've got a cell tower here and light standards on the sports field, but nothing high. What we anticipate is that as we come down, we're going to go south and probably a little bit of a right turn. If we keep this descent rate, which is good, then what we might get is a little bit of a right turn and we can land just to the right side of those tractors. Okay. Okay. So, you want to have your arm around the bolster, hand on the red line. That's sort of your ready position. Okay. Yep. It's tempting to burn, but don't do it. Not yet. It's about to. Yep. Burn. Let me start that. Now you can burn a little bit. So, if we don't get a strong right turn, I'll have to level out. Then I like being right on the other side of this stuff, on the other side of the black fence in that construction field. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. Now, again, tempting to burn, don't do it. Now, can you smell the air? Yep. It just got more cold and more humid. Yep. So you see how we just leveled out? Uh -huh. Now we're gonna have to cool and we'll we'll drop right back into that. It's totally fine. Whew. Nervous a little bit. Yep, no worries. We got tons of space, tons of time. I and knew if, I was gonna be on my first landing. And if we do decide, we can abort. You right, know, just go up. Yeah. We know we got a lot of fuel. Right. Okay, now give it a little puff. We did start to get this right turn, but we're, this tractor is a little bit inconvenient, right? right. Okay. So I'm going to move over here so I got good visibility. Okay. Now another little burn. Nice. Okay. So what I propose is that so that we're not distracted by it, we go over the little black fence and into that field. Okay. Sound good? Okay. Now. I shouldn't burn. I shouldn't burn right now, right? Right. It's tempting though, oh, isn't it? I want to so bad. Now a little puff. A little puff. Okay, that was a little bit too much in my opinion. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. You're fine. Okay, so now notice how the balloon continues to rotate. And so that all that work to get us a line, it's sort right. of all for naught. Okay, a little burn. But you're still in your happy corner. You still got the red line in your hand. Like, are we going to clear that fence? Yep, a little burn. Okay, now, be ready with your with your red line. Go ahead and pull the red line now. Keep pulling, 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 keep pulling. Pull a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. There you go, now it's just starting to open. Now you keep that open, and just hold it open. Make sure you're hanging on, and now let it go. And now open that red line again. You want to hold that red line open until we stabilize. Yep. And go ahead and let it ease up very slowly. Nicely done. Oh, man. First landing. Nicely done, man. Great job. Okay, now it would be ideal if we were rotated just a little bit that way. We'll rotate that basket for us because now the scoop will help inflate that. And. Uh, yeah, there's some dirt up there. Today. Yeah. <laughs> Nice job. Thank you. That was you landing, right? That was me landing. Oh, yeah. All of it. Nice. Okay, so. 
make sure I know where we are here. Okay, we've just crossed an hour. So although I think we could keep flying, uh, I think we should be done. I'd be okay with being done. Uh, it's amazing <laughs> how exhausting it is. It, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's tiring. Okay, so think about your layout plan. What, what do you propose is the right answer? Well, I'm feeling wind on the back of my neck. Yep. So we should lay out that way. Okay. Um, we were pretty close to that, so maybe walk back a little bit. Okay. Or do you think we'd be okay going that way? I think you've got a lot of options. I think you could actually lay it down straight right where you are, and you'd be super close to those sticks um, and probably not worth messing with. Another alternative is you could, you could work with the crew and hop over that and then land the basket in the road and lay it out in the field. That's another option. Or we could try to walk back. That breeze in our neck is a little Might strong to walk right. back. Or we could try to lay it out sideways. The concern I'd have with sideways is that we're going to get close to that post and these posts and things like that. Okay. So my recommendation, if it were me, would be to just barely hop this, this black fence here okay. and actually stop it in the pavement okay. and let the basket just rest on the curb and then lay the blade over. Okay. Okay. So I think what I'd recommend is why don't you guys go ahead and let us go and if you'll just kind of head back out onto the road because I don't want you to try and climb over that. A little bit awkward. Okay, so in this case, your balloon's pretty cold. Right, so to... you want to burn a whole lot. Pretty unstable, too. Yep, and keep burning. What we don't want is to just skip and go through. Right, the we want to get up and get That's off the right. burning quite a bit. is we want to watch out for the sign, the sign yeah. and the phone box. Okay, okay one more break. Nice. So now we just sort of pay attention to the direction. Of course, we're going right towards both obstacles. Right. Right, that's fine. You've got enough heat in it now that you, you are going to clear them. Okay. And so I think we just sort of let it ride. Okay. Okay. Of course, we went right towards the sign, right? Sure, okay. Okay, and now I would give it just a little bit of a bit. Not much though. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we've changed directions yeah, enough, right? We got holes in the way and yeah. all right, so so what do you say we land right in this gravel lot here? Okay. Okay. Start venting? I would I would actually just let it come down nice and slow and we'll go for the center of the road. Okay. That 10 sign is sort of right in the way, but it'll cool enough. Okay, a little burn. Burn, burn, burn. And now a nice healthy vent. And then just keep that vent open. Yep, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And keep the vent open. Nice, that's perfect. Get off the vent. Yeah, just go ahead and ease that out a little bit. Now this is perfect spacing, right? Because the sign is real close to us here. Right. But the nice thing is, if we let stretch it down the road, we don't have to worry too much about that sign. Right. So what we'll end up doing is we'll just rotate it, and we'll actually lay right down the middle of the road. I don't think we have to worry about that. Okay. okay. Yeah, we think we're good. Yep. That's two yeah, landings. Now that landing was about 250 feet a minute. Okay. Not that a wasn't big deal. bad at all. No. You would. I would deliberately land that hard all day long. Especially because you stuck it right in the middle of the road, as opposed to that fear of the, the landing gets you drifting into a sign and all the, you don't want to mess with that. So, plunking it in the middle of the road is always a good option. Especially because you saw we drove a little bit, right? right? I mean, we landed eight feet back there. So, always got to be aware of that. Okay, I think we should be done. Um, so, yep, Scott, if you'll take the crown line. And so, the first thing you want to do now is shut your fuel off. Okay. Pilot two? Yep.
Yes, sir. Yep, we're going to lead them all the way out. That's open? Yep. So I should just leave it open? Yep. Okay, you're good there. So I'm going to go ahead and hop out. Okay. Okay, you're cold enough. You're not going to go anywhere. Okay. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. There we go. All right, and just start pulling on the crown. Yep. Got you ready? We're going to go right down the middle of the road. Yep. And hey, that's good. Hold that right there. Okay. Now, look. You see where the patch is? Yeah. See, there's also a six-inch tear up there. Oh, man. I'll show you to you once we lay it down. That's one of the reasons I wanted to be on the table. Okay. okay. Make sure you get your foot up. Yep, there you go. Nice. Okay, now is Did your... you see it in flight? Yeah. See, I didn't even notice. I'm gonna start my tractor so I know what we're doing here. that temptation to overburn right right and I have seen that temptation screw up more landings because you're not low enough whereas we just glided right, right into that landing it was no big deal whereas if you had burned when we wanted to then when it was time to land we would right. have been 20 feet in the air right having to jump over those and right. go somewhere else you go into the boot and you just dunk it in what do you do so you really got to practice getting that that low approach just like you did today and then this little hop over was perfect. We went a little higher than we needed to, which is what you want to do, because you don't want to come sliding through those objects. Rather higher, too high than too low. Right. Um, and something that's really important to note about this last sort of, you know, 100 yards here, is that I see so many mistakes trying to get to the ideal landing spot, whereas where we were was fun. Right. And if the weather's marginal at all, don't push it. Because, I mean, we thought we were just going to go right over there, but we right. didn't. So then we have the sign, and this sign, and that thing, and this other sign, and these two signs, and then the big poles. That's when accidents start. So just don't push it, and lay it down. Who cares if you lay it in the dirt? It's still coming. Mean, the crew is there, the truck is there. What's the big deal? And we could have just put a little extra muscle to turn the balloon sideways to avoid the, the fence. So I think it's excellent. 